Hello, this is Mighty Owl. We've already aced multiplication, and we already know the world doesn't always have nice whole numbers that can be multiplied. So what do you say? Let's help a few of our friends today who seem to be having some difficulty multiplying fractions. Chen lives three-fourths of a mile away from school. He ran one-third of the way to school. He wonders now which model describes this. And how many miles did he actually run? Okay, so Chen ran one-third of the total distance to school. Well, the word of indicates multiplication. And this means that the correct model is the one that shows multiplication. Well, here we have both models B and C showing multiplication. Since we are multiplying fourths and thirds, the rows and columns need to be in thirds and fourths. So it looks like model C has one, two, three, four, five rows, and we're not multiplying by fifths, so that would mean the correct model is B. Now let's double check model B just to be sure. There are three columns, and one of them is shaded red. So this represents one out of three, or one third. And there are four rows, and three out of the four are shaded blue. And so that represents three-fourths. So this model is multiplying one-third by three-fourths. Perfect. Okay, now let's use the model to find out how many miles Chen ran. Well, there are a total of 12 parts giving us a denominator of 12. There are three sections that are colored by both the red and blue to make purple. So this is our numerator. Chen ran three-twelfths of a mile. Whew, way to go, Chen. Uh, but hang on. We can simplify the answer. Our numerator and denominator are both multiples of 3. So if we divide 3 by 3, we get 1. And 12 divided by 3 equals 4. And that gives us 1 fourth. So Chen actually ran a quarter of a mile. Fantastic work. Pretty soon he's going to be running marathons. Oh, and here's Isabella. She just came back from the vet with her two dogs. She can't quite remember what the weight of each individual dog is. She just remembers that the doctor said their combined weight is 14 and two-thirds pounds. Also, she remembers that one dog weighs half as much as the other dog. Okay, well that's some useful information. I bet we can help Isabella find out how much each dog weighs. Hmm, let's see. If one dog weighs a certain amount, represented by this box, well then the other would weigh half the amount. So we can split this box in half, and create another box that's the same size. And it looks like we have three parts here. Okay, 14 and 2 thirds is really close to 15. 15 can be divided into three equal groups of five. And that would mean that one dog would weigh about five pounds, and the other dog would weigh about ten pounds. Good, but that's just an estimation. Let's see how much their precise weight is, because precision is perfection. According to the diagram, we need to find one-third of fourteen and two-thirds. Huh, <laughs> sounds fun. All right, here we go. First, we need to change the mixed number into an improper fraction. So 3 multiplied by 14, well that's 42. Add 2 to get 44. 44 thirds multiplied by 1 third. Now 44 times 1 is 44. And 3 times 3 is 9. So each section is 44 ninths. And now let's change that to a mixed number. 9 times 4 is 36. So there are 4 holes with 8 ninths left. Therefore, each section is 4 and 8 ninths. And that means one dog weighs 4 and 8 ninths pounds, and the other dog weighs 4 and 8 ninths plus 4 and 8 ninths. And that's 9 and 7 ninths pounds. Whew, no wonder it was hard for Isabella to remember each dog's weight. But, now she knows a good way to calculate it whenever she needs it. Hmm. Hmm. Why does it smell so yummy over here? Oh, Lucas is making chicken noodle soup, that's why. 
The recipe for Lucas's chicken noodle soup uses one and one third pounds of chicken and three fourths of a cup of carrots. How much of each ingredient is needed to make two and a half times the recipe? Sounds like to solve this, we will need to multiply the amount of each ingredient by two and a half. Now let's practice some of the different strategies we already learned. To find the total amount of chicken, we're going to multiply one and one third and two and one half. Our first step is to change the mixed numbers to improper fractions. Multiply the denominator by the whole number before adding the numerator. And all right, let's do it. 3 multiplied by 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, 1 and 1 third equals 4 thirds. Great! Next fraction. 2 multiplied by 2 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, so 2 and 1 half is equal to 5 halves. Perfect! And now it's mighty multiplication time. Alright, multiplying the numerators, we get 20. The denominator, uh, 3 times 2, gives us 6, and so we have the fraction 20 over 6. Now let's change that to a mixed number. Okay, there are 3 groups of 6 and 20, with 2 left over. That means that we have the mixed number 3 and 2 sixths. Hey, did you notice that both the numerator and denominator are even numbers? So we can simplify it further by dividing both the numerator and denominator by two. Aha! A nice reduced fraction of one-third. And now we know we need three and one-third pounds of chicken. And let's try to use a model to help us find the total amount of carrots needed. First, we can create boxes to represent the two and one-half. Ah, there we go. Now we need to make four columns and shade in three to show the multiplication of three-fourths. Fantastic! Each box has eight parts and there are a total of 15 parts shaded purple. And that means we're going to need 15 eighths cups of carrots. Uh, let's change that to a mixed number. One and seven eighths cups of carrots. All right! And now, Lucas is ready to make two and a half times his favorite chicken noodle soup. Wow! Multiplication and fractions really are everywhere. We've practiced some mighty strategies to help with any multiplication of fractions that you may run across in your life. Amazing work! Oh, that soup is really smelling good. I think I may take a quick snack break, and then I'll see you in the next lesson.